Yo, let me take you guys back to the year of 2007. I'm talking about back when life was a little simpler, back when you wouldn't leave your house without your PSP or Nintendo DS, back when Spider-Man 3 and Transformers were in theaters, and back when every single WWE pay-per-view seemed like it was the most important show ever. I was 9 years old and to me wrestling in 07 was just the greatest thing. Despite the ratings slowly going down, drug busts happening, wrestlers getting suspended every single week, and a double murder suicide. While it seemed like the wrestling world was crashing down and it hurt inside, I was having the time of my life watching wrestling like it was my religion. John Cena was in his prime, Batista was back from injury, Undertaker became a monster again, and despite Edge traumatizing me, every pay per view that year was hitting. By the end of the year, I was so invested in the product that when it was time for the October pay per view, I simply just needed it. It was No Mercy 2007, for the majority of fans back then this was just going to be another monthly pay per view, but for me this was something much bigger than that, for me I was ready to sell my soul to the devil if it meant I could watch this. That was all because of one match, the main event of the show was going to be John Cena vs Randy Orton in a last man standing match for the WWE title. That match for a little changing soldier like me felt like the biggest match of the year, this felt bigger than Wrestlemania for me, this was bigger than anything. Cena, who had been champion for over a year while in the run of a lifetime, was up against a certified demon. The legend killer, the apex predator, the man who was punting everyone in his way, ending careers, the man who beat up Cena's dad in front of him. This was going to be special and it was going to be a last man standing match. Something had to give, someone was going to bleed, someone was going to die, it was going to be amazing. That match sold the pay per view for me, but that wasn't all. Batista was taking on the Great Khali in a Punjabi prison match, and as a proud Punjabi boy myself, I admit it, I was amped. Two stipulation matches on one show, plus Jeff Hardy was wrestling, Rey Mysterio was wrestling, Triple H was wrestling. And just to make things even more hyped the week before the show, this strange promo appeared on Raw and had all of us at school trying to figure out what was going on. To say it was an exciting time would be an understatement, I was begging my mom two weeks out to order this show. She of course, said no. See, this was a time before there was a WWE network, before you could find live streams easily, before every and any pay per view was only $10 a month with a subscription, nah back then times were rough, this was back when getting to watch a pay per view was like a moment you were never gonna forget. The amount of begging that had to go down for you to get the privilege to watch a pay per view was insane, and that's what it was, a privilege. And the issue was, I had just gone SummerSlam a month ago for my birthday. Yeah, back in the day, I used to get SummerSlam for my birthday some years, and I don't mean like go to SummerSlam, no 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 no, just being able to watch it at home on pay per view was a big enough birthday gift for me. And my mom was not about to spend another $40 to watch some fake wrestling that fast. But of course, I begged, I begged, and I begged. Because goddammit mom, it was John Cena vs Randy Orton in a last man standing match, I had to watch this. And finally, on the Thursday before the show, after making a promise to my mom that I would only get B's or higher on my next report card, she ordered me the show. She called her local cable company and ordered No Mercy. It was the best feeling ever and I instantly ran to my room and I dug through my VHS collection and found a random tape. Because back then when you ordered a pay per view and you spent $40 on it, you made sure you recorded that shit because you needed to watch that over and over to get your money worth. I had the VHS picked out so I could watch Batista win, I could watch my boys Triple H, Chef Hardy, Rey Mysterio all win and most importantly so I could see my boy John Cena be the last man standing and have the tape forever. And this right here ladies and gentlemen is that very VHS tape that I recorded back in October of 2007. 16 years ago me and my friends sat down at 8pm with this VHS and the VCR and as the show took place it recorded the entire show on this little tape. And upon finding this tape recently it unlocked all the memories for the show. This VHS was going to be the recording of a show that I would watch over and over for months after it aired. But instead this tape ended up being a recording of a show that left me angry, miserable and depressed for months after it aired. It was October 7, 2007, it was a nice cold Sunday night. My friends were gonna come over around 7pm, the pizza had been ordered, the coke was out. No, not that coke. Life was good, my mom had actually held it down and if you grew up in the 90s or the 2000s and you actually had to order a pay per view to watch it, you, you know this feeling, you know how special this was. My friends arrive, they ring the doorbell, I hear it, I run downstairs, I run to the door to let him in, everything is amazing, life was amazing, it was gonna be the best night ever. So they all come inside, they're taking their jackets off, their sweaters off, they're getting all cozy, and one of my friends just casually says, uh, hey Pav, who do you think is gonna be the new WWE Champion? And I remember just hearing that, and then going, what the fuck do you mean, new WWE Champion? 
When I tell you that my heart dropped, I, I'm not lying. When I tell you it felt like a roller coaster and I got that weird feeling in my stomach, I am not lying. This was probably the first time I ever faced any type of anxiety because they were about to tell me something that I did not want to hear, something I didn't know. This was my 9-11. This was my JFK assassination because they tell me 30 minutes before the show's about to start, John Cena's injured and he's not going to be at no mercy. Oh, and uh, he's no longer champion. I swear to god, I wanted to cry, like no, as silly as it is, I genuinely wanted to cry. This night was supposed to be so special, this night was gonna be epic, you know, John Cena, last man standing match, I begged my mom to order this, this was gonna be amazing, and now you're telling me John Cena's basically dead? I, I was so excited for this, but the whole time this idiot's injured and I had no idea. After begging my mom to order the show and even lying to her, cause let's be real, my report card marks were not going up. After her spending the money, ordering the pizza, all my friends coming over like it was some big party. Bro, it wasn't a party, it should have been a funeral. It was genuinely the worst day of my 9 year old life, I'm, I'm not joking. I was ready to end it all, depressed isn't even a strong enough word, and I was just sitting there like really, I called all my friends over and I did all this just so I can watch the great Kali in a world title match, just so Randy Orton can win a Mickey Mouse championship. Cause I knew that was happening, I knew that these idiots were gonna make Randy the champion, somehow he was gonna walk out champion, and the depression just hit me like a truck. John Cena had gotten injured on the Raw Before No Mercy six nights before the show, after getting RKO'd on the announce table he tore his right peck, and the next night on ECW, Vince actually announced that Cena got clapped and he had to vacate the title, and at No Mercy that a new champion was gonna be crowned. The issue was... Nobody fucking watched ECW. So how the hell was I supposed to know? I didn't have a computer, I didn't have Facebook, I had no social media. The only time I could ever go on WWE.com was if somehow by some divine miracle we ended up in the computer lab that week. I had no way of knowing. I didn't know, my friends didn't know, and then Thursday my mom orders a show. And then Friday I didn't watch SmackDown because of course that one week I had an indoor soccer game. All my friends do, they watch it so they know Cena's injured, but I don't. And I don't get to see these idiots until Sunday and of course that's when I find out after everything had already been done. It sounds so silly looking back at it but yo back then it, it was heartbreaking like it was genuinely heartbreaking it's, it's hard to describe how sad I was. I was so sad I was in such a mood that I even took the VHS from the VCR and I was like you know what I don't want to watch this I don't want to record this mom can you get a refund and my mom actually got mad at me and forced me to shut up and watch this shit because she had already paid for it. So it's funny because this VHS doesn't even start with the intro, no, I was in a mood and I you know, took it out. This VHS actually starts like 5 minutes into the show. But yeah, there I was in 07, depressed, it went from oh my god this is gonna be the best night ever to I don't wanna watch this anymore. But nah, I had no choice, I had to watch the show, and the best part is, No Mercy 07 ended up being a show that played directly with my emotions. No Mercy 07 besides my depression and anger as a 9 year old is such a fascinating show looking back at it. The company had to change up all their plans and rewrite the show after Cena was injured and because of that it ended up being one of the most unique pay per views they've ever done. The show began with Vince coming out and once again telling everyone that Cena was injured and that a new champion was going to be crowned that night. And right away all the fans began chanting Y2J, Y2J. As kids we had no idea that the video that appeared 6 nights before was about Jericho but all the older kids already knew and they were expecting Jericho to come out and save the pay-per-view, but instead of Jericho coming out, Vince ended up opening the pay-per-view by crowning Randy Orton as the new champion. And yo, no doubt, this made my blood boil, this man injured my goat and now we're just gonna get handed the title 380 days down the drain, all because of that damn RKO on the table. But what made this show awesome was, they didn't just give Randy the belt and call it a day, they didn't just have him wrestle a quick match and win the belt or add him to an existing match, instead, the entire show flowed through the championship and it was a night where the title became the the ring from Lord of the Rings, where everyone was chasing it. Triple H came out and one of the most unexpected things happened. Triple H, after roasting everybody in the ring, Vince, Orton, and Regal, got Vince to make an impromptu match, and out of nowhere, No Mercy 07's opening contest was Triple H versus Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. And when I tell you this match was hot, it was hot. The crowd went absolutely nuts for this, and the crowd at home, us little kids watching, we went even crazier. Triple H now was our one and only hope, and this pay-per-view had been flipped turned upside down and those crackheads at the company had us invested
existed once again. Yeah, Cena was basically dead and it made us sad, but at this point, we all became Triple H fans. And we got a title match that nobody expected, but nah, this match was fire. The excitement of the impromptu match had the crowd tweaking at every move, suplexes to DDTs, the fans were just hungry, and everything was just so unexpected, everything was so crazy. Doesn't Triple H have a match with Umaga tonight? Is there still gonna be a last man standing match? Does my dad love me? There were so many questions. Everything was chaos, but it didn't matter because this pay-per-view suddenly became even more hype. And I still remember the ending like it was yesterday. About 10 minutes into the match, we had no clue who was gonna win. Nobody really had the advantage and Randy was running to the corner. He hit the post and boom, hit his shoulder. Triple H rolls him up and you know, nobody ever wins with a roll up, but legit out of nowhere, one, two, three, Triple H became the WWE Champion. It was a party, it was a celebration, it was the best thing ever. We were saved from Randy Orton and in 20 minutes, I went from depressed to yes, this is awesome, it's fine, I love Triple H, I love wrestling, I'm so happy I ordered this show. We just saw the title change in the first match of the night. We had just seen the biggest championship in wrestling change with a roll up out of nowhere. This was unlike anything we had ever seen and it was just an awesome moment and the pay per view had legit just started. If I only knew the roller coaster that was ahead of me. The show continues and it's just a normal fun show from 07 for the most part, back when I was just happy to see wrestlers wrestle, uh, crazy right? Matt Hardy and MVP at this point were having their little competition beef and they had a pizza eating contest which was absolutely disgusting. Yo I swear to god, I have never looked at Matt Hardy the same since this. But as the show went on, we realized that the night for the champion Triple H was far from over. So originally on the show, Triple H had a match against Umaga and after he won the title in the opening match, Vince told him backstage that he still was going to have a match against Umaga, but now it was going to be for the title. So we had a second WWE title match on the night. Hey, we paid for one, but we were going to get two and Triple H came out with the belt, he made his entrance, and we knew going into the show he was going to take on Umaga, but nobody could have ever imagined it was going to end up a title match. So Umaga gets in the ring, he is terrifying at this point, we still hated him, we were still scared of him, and these two just go at it. And all of us watching at home, we're just praying and hoping that Triple H retains somehow. At the same time, we're also in awe because we're like, yo, what the hell are we seeing? How did it go from Cena's champion to this that fast? But these two go off, and in legit 4 minutes in, they were already trying to do their finishers and already trying everything they could. Steel steps, finisher reversals, everything was being used, nobody had any idea what the hell was happening, Triple H almost got CT from Umaga's ass, but boom, pedigree, one, two, three, Triple H came clutch and retained the title. We once again jumped for joy, all was good in the hood, and it was a fun moment. Back then, we didn't care about the match quality or anything like that. We didn't care it was in some 20 minute epic match. We were just happy we were getting title matches and the good guy was winning, and that's exactly what we got. Triple H survived, the bad guys were in the mud, that's all we wanted. Batista took on Kali in a Punjabi prison match that I swear to God, yo, it is not as bad as you might think it is. Yes, I, I I am a Punjabi prison apologist. No, it has nothing to do with my ethnicity. <laughs> hey, I know there hasn't technically ever been a good one, but I swear if they tried, they could make this into a really fun match. The match ended with Batista going crazy and becoming a real life superhero before Drax the Destroyer, where he jumped from the inner cage to the outer cage and escaped before Kali and retained the title. And as you know, if you watched SmackDown during this era from 05, 06, 07, Batista was your guy. Batista was the man, and if he was champion, it was all good. And just like that, to my surprise, back in 07, this was such a fun show. I went from being depressed to pretty happy, which is so funny to think about now. Because if I spent $40 and this was the show I got, I would be outside of headquarters protesting right now. But back then, we were easily impressed and we were just happy with anything. We could have ordered the worst pay-per-view ever and we still would have forced ourselves to love it. So yeah, we were having fun and almost kind of forgot our favorite wrestler died. You know, Batista retained, Triple H stole the title from Randy, wrestled two matches in one, we got to see a fat man eat a pizza it could have been worse and the best part was though the show wasn't over yet Our excitement reached new levels when we found out that Triple H was going to wrestle one more time, that the main event was still going to be a last man standing match, and that Orton was taking on Triple H for the title. This was crazy hype, okay? Triple H wrestling three times in one night is amazing as itself, but then the fact that the last man standing match was still gonna happen, that was a legendary stipulation back in the day, and we were going to see Triple H finally just destroy Randy and send him back into the hospital, and best of all, we were gonna get violence, because at the end of the day, we were just just bloodthirsty kids, and to us, if a match had blood and it was a stipulation match, it was easily 5 stars. The show that 2 hours ago I didn't even want to watch anymore was now becoming something that I couldn't wait to watch over and over after I, this was over. Triple H came out for the third time that night, Randy made his entrance, and it felt like two men walking into the Roman Coliseum.
Coliseum about to battle to the death for the title. You could say that, oh, this devalues the title, this makes the title look bad or whatever, I don't care to me. This made the title seem that much more important and special. That these people cared that much to it, that they're putting their bodies on the line, having multiple matches, having a last man standing match out of nowhere, like, to me it just added to it. And these two put on a banger. It was 20 minutes of intense drama, 20 minutes of two men trying to kill each other, it was so back and forth and so intense with so many close calls, it truly was epic. It just felt special, right? It was the third time wrestling in one night, trying to walk out champion, Jim Ross was out here losing his voice 10 minutes into the match, that itself just shows you how special it was. Steel steps, chairs, pun kicks, spine busters, you name it, they were doing everything and anything. Eventually blood was pouring everywhere and once that happened I was like yep, the $40 were very well spent. At 7.30 earlier that night I was ready to end it all and by 10.30 I was on my feet praying and hoping that Triple H was going to win. The most bipolar 3 hours of my life, the VHS was being recorded in the VCR and I remember telling myself I can't wait to watch this again. Towards the end they had destroyed each other and it looked like Triple H was walking out the champion, which was perfect. I wasn't the biggest Triple H fan but I was like, nah, he's too good. He's the game. Uh. About 20 minutes into the war, after tables were broken, after chairs were used, Triple H went crazy with the steps and a chair, and it deadass looked like Randy's soul had left his body. Once that happened and the referee began to count, Orton was out like a light, and I was like, alright, this is over, it's done, what a night, what a pay per view, by god, Triple H has done it. But nah. Randy somehow got up at 9 and this psychopath out of nowhere just when everything seemed so good for Triple H, just when everything seemed so good for me. Just when a few seconds ago I was having the time of my life thinking how lucky I was to order this show and witness this live and have a recording of it and call my friends over just when everything was so good. Boom. RKO on the announce table. The same exact move that he did to Cena 6 nights prior to this. The same move that injured him that sent him packing home. The same move that ruined my life. He did to Triple H. And the count began and Triple H was bleeding everywhere, barely moving, and he deadass didn't move until the referee got to 7. My heart stopped, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, that feeling in my stomach came back and I was just like, nah, please, please, not this way. By the 8 count, he was slowly crawling around trying to survive and he fell off the table and it looked like, it looked like he was gonna get up, he was gonna come clutch, he was gonna, you know, figure it out. The count's at 9, he's crawling to the ring, he puts his hands on the apron. But nah, he falls down as a referee reaches 10 and Randy Orton became the WWE Champion. My heart was shattered. The same guy who injured Cena and now destroyed Triple H was now the champion and I was just sitting there not believing what I had seen. From the excitement I had about the show to the depression of finding out Cena was injured to the happiness that Triple H was champion to actually enjoying the show and being glad I ordered it. At the end, it was right back to depression. At the end, the only man standing was Randy Orton with the bell, who during Edge's disappearance at this time, became my number one mortal enemy, and now he was the champion. And I'll never forget, the show ends as Randy kisses the bell, and I was just sitting there like, this is absolutely disgusting. As the show ended and the recording stopped, as all my friends went home because it was a school night, I was just left there with me and this VHS tape. And I swear, after that night, I never watched the show ever again. No Mercy 07 after that night never happened in my eyes, not in my household. I forgot I had a tape of it. I forgot everything about it because it was just a painful reminder of what could and should have been the best night ever. The night where Cena was champion, the night I ordered and I watched him beat Randy Jordan and he retains, but nah. Instead, it ended up being this. This tape was going to be the holy grail, but it ended up being a tape of depression. It's so funny looking back at this event and my story in general, where I was in life, how I was as a little kid, how important this was, how much we valued wrestling events at the time, how much they meant to us, and how big of a deal it was to get one, how much we valued the results, and who won, who didn't, who was champion, who wasn't, the ups and downs, the drama. We were little kids, and we were so naive, and we were so young, and we were just having the time of our lives and it was such a different time and it was something you can never live again because even kids these days like yeah they watch wrestling and they have their shows but not like this man they weren't attached to it like how we were because for us it was it was special it was scarce it wasn't something that we had access to 24 7 we didn't have every pay-per-view we didn't have a subscription we didn't have youtube that much to search up anything and everything the only thing we had on youtube was 240p matches split up into like five different parts we didn't have the company uploading full matches it was just different all this drama all these feelings 
feelings around a random ass wrestling show and like i said it's funny to think about it but at the same time it's like yo what a time it was to be alive but yeah it was such a fascinating show triple h wrestling three times randy being handed the title a punjabi prison match for some reason cena not making it to the show and the show ending with randy winning his first ever wwe championship that is a very important part of history and honestly what a way to win it what a perfect way for randy Orton to win the big one and for what it's worth they took the cena injury and made it into a damn good pay-per-view something that was so unique and so fun and so different from anything we had seen at that point what's crazy is the original plan for this show was for randy to actually beat cena in that last man standing match so honestly i don't know what i would have preferred back then because if i ordered this show just to see cena lose and get clapped in a last man standing match i probably would have been just as heartbroken if not more i guess it just wasn't meant to be to this day i still have the vhs and i'm so happy i still have the vhs it's such a hidden memory and it's awesome how a simple vhs tape and a random october pay-per-view from all the way back in 2007 could have such a story attached to it so yeah no mercy 07 in my household was an interesting time to say the least in the comments down below let me know if you have any funny pay-per-view stories from back in the day that you want to share i would love to read them and if you made it this far i just hope you enjoyed the video i wanted to try something new by mixing a story time with a retrospective of a show so let me know what you think down below Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. It's your boy Pav. Thank you guys so much for the support. I'll see you guys very soon with the next one. Till then, take it easy.